up, YouTube? It's your boy, Obey, who say, What's up, Black and Slayer Productions? I catch you with another tutorial. This time, we're going to get into setting up your project and having it set up in a way that you can navigate to everything and make it work smooth. So, first thing you'll want to do is create a project. Now, when you create your project, start making tracks say once you start making your tracks so when I start off in my folder I start off with probably one track so when I start off with that one track say I know I know my plugin that I'm gonna use so here I got Nexus loaded I had this plugin loaded All right, once I got this plugin loaded, I go ahead and play whatever I'm going to play. So I play what I play. Once I did that, I'll probably load another Nexus, play whatever else I'm going to play. Then I load my drums. Once I, by the third track, I start naming tracks. So by then I go back and name Nexus or see how I got it another track going in the Nexus, so there's Nexus 1, with Nexus 1-2 one going in this output into this track. And how you would do that, you would go right here, change the output to whatever track you want. So this is in my SIPs folder, so it's in my project folder, B folder, SIP folder, Nexus 1. That's what it's output to. So that's what I do. Then once I do that, so now I create a folder, which will be now is the SIF folder. Then I create another folder, which is going to be my MPC folder because I got my drums in my MPC. Then when I load my MPC, I rack my MPC by I load my MPC on the track come drop it straight on the track, select the MPC plugin. Once I select it, I right click it. Oh, I gotta do it with this plugin. Right click it, wrap this plugin in a new wrap rack plugin. Click on that. Then once you click on that, you wanna make sure you only make copies of the same plugin and drag it down the track. And when you so you can get the different output. So you can see this one say output one and two. This one say three and four, five and six. See, then once you got all that, and every time you start making these tracks, and now once you notice that you're making them, and they all get to where you want them. So now, like, I finished my drums. I know I had all my drums. So what I did, I rendered them out and put them on the track. But you don't got to do that. You can keep them in there if you want. But what I find is that sometimes the MIDI time, it might go all on your edit. So you might want to take on, like, the MPC sometimes. So you might want to take them tracks out and put them on here. The audio. So that's how I did it. So once I did that, now you can notice all my tracks are tagged. So now I, tra I tag the tracks. So it's tagged. Three is drums. One is beat. So it's tagged. And two things I can go to to get straight to this. So then you can notice I got show only tag tracks. So that means only the tag tracks will be shown. But I ain't got none of them selected. So everything's shown right now. But once I select one of these, it's only going to show that. But the only way this works, too, you got to make sure every folder is open. Don't have no folders closed. So when you select a track that's inside of a folder, you're not going to be able to see it because the folder going to be closed. So I'm going to show you what I mean. So if I go to vocal, see all my vocal tracks come up. So this will make your navigation easier. Like you got some people, if you're coming from another DAW, you probably would rather, you would probably like the small transport bar. Uh, you can move this around, I mean, if you don't know. You can put 
this over here, but you can see it did seem it seemed more better to me. This it seemed more better to me to even have it on this side coming from this way to that way. It's more comfortable to me this way or right here. Like this better for using multiple. I think up top is better for multiple. Using multiple windows open. If you're going to use one window, either side, whatever side feel better to you, but I feel this side feel better to me, the drag and drop and everything, other than going this way. I don't know, for some reason, I just like coming from this way. I'm right handed, so. But you'll see, once you set this up and you're getting on your track, so every time you're building, you're making sure you're making tags, and it's best to number them, too. You number them, and, uh, they line up a little better, and you can find them a little faster. When you, once you start remembering the number, you're going to know. So you'll just look up there. Instead of remembering the whole words, you're going to be knowing one, two, three, four. It's going to be easy to find them. And you know what else I always do is with my folders I always make a, a text plugin. So, but this time I showed you what the text plugin really can come in handy for. So you see on my project folder, if you go click on my text plugin, then if I go to the Runs tool, you see Always on the Go, that's the name of the track. It's, uh, matter of fact, I think it's not 69 tracks no more. Oh yeah, it's 69 tracks. Tempo 140 BPM. Memphis 4 minutes and 13 seconds. 149 bar. So I got that information right there. I got my B folder. Let me know it's 16 B tracks, 6 Nexus track, 1 SIF track, 9 NPC track. Same thing, SIF folder, 6 Nexus track. Then you can see I got my presets for the next. So if anything go wrong or something. I can go right here and I know my presets were that I was using. So that make it easier to work. Same thing, MPC 9 tracks, and I'm showing the programs that I'm using in my text plugin. I got um, on my verses, got three verses with all with backgrounds and ad lib tracks for all three verses. And you come down on my aux folder, 12 aux tracks, 3 dry aux drum sip and vocals, 4 vocal auxes, 4 V aux, and 1 dry mix aux. So my subs, I got 11 sub tracks, 3 dry mix tracks, 1 drum, uh, 2 sips, 3 is vocal, 4 kick. Kick and snare, five other percussions, six bass, seven keys and sift, eight lead guitar, nine vocals, ten aux, and eleven B aux. Then on my faders, my master faders, I got four fader track, aux fader, B fader, vocal fader, and master fader. Then I got a, a print track right here. This four ones. So I'm finish with my edit, I record it back in through traction right here on my print track. So that'll be pretty much it. I use this to go for search for plugins. Search right here for plugins and I use this one for loading up samples and files. So I have all three of these open on the regular. But I normally work with this still up. I mean, some people like it down, but I don't like to keep on having to go over there and hit the button. I, I want my properties to come up every time when I select on stuff, so I keep this up most of the time. It depends on what I'm doing. But don't be scared to shut down windows. Like, whenever you need to, like I know when I'm working on just audio, I shut this down when I know I'm editing. I shut this down when I know I'm just editing. Mixing, I keep this up most of the time when I'm going through a lot of plugins. 
if I'm editing, I drop this down. But I hardly ever take it all the way off like this. Like I hardly ever do that. I don't know why I just don't. But yeah, I take this down, work on my audio clips, mini clips, and I do that. Yeah, but I start getting used to using these. And then when you start doing stuff, like once you do anything like a mix on a plug-in or anything, start getting used to uh, saving. Control S. Press Control S on your uh, keyboard, or you can just hit the save button right there. But start doing it as often as possible because you can have some crashes sometimes. It is going to crash on you. But most of the time it opens straight back up, but you could have lost whatever you just done. So start getting used to doing control S the easiest way. You don't keep coming over here to save, but just start doing it on the regular. Like right after you do certain things, just start pressing it. Alright, and then that's like pretty much it's like what I wanted to just show y'all for the navigation and you want to get it, make it much easier for you, you can go do your macros, so, you know, you'll go to your macros, and people who are familiar with it, so you can see I got all my macros and project folders, so I can load all my folders up and everything, I can just pull them out, people that's not familiar with this, so, but if you want this, you can go download this at uh, labreductions.com the macro that I have, you can just change it to the plugins and stuff that you have. All you got to do is put the name in of the plugin in the places of where my plugin is and it'll work. So, then after that, I got something I wanted to show. I want to have a shootout real quick, right? With the final mix master mix. Now, I'm going to tell you the plus size and the downsides of both of them off the break. So, the plus side on the final mix. Now, if you can see right here, the master mix CPU is a little higher than the final mix. It's a little higher, see. Normally a little higher on the master mix, and the but the latency is at zero on the master mix. So you probably can use more. You probably can use more than I mean use that better on a mic while a mic is plugged up than the final mix. If you have a problem with CPU, I mean it'll work on mine. With the 6 out 6 see, I had no problem. I could put it straight on the mic, and I had no problem. But I'm saying somebody else might have a problem. I know when I use the M-Audio, the little cheap M-Audio, what's that little M-Audio box called? Whatever that M-Audio box called. I forgot the name. I ain't used it in a minute. But the little M-Audio one, it is. Some plugins that don't work right when you try to put plugins on while right, you use the mic. And it could have the Lord direct switch that you turn it up and all that. Some of them be cool. Like the solo cool with that with that switch, but some of them would have turn it up. That just means you ain't gonna be able to use no plugins while you're recording. That's what that basically just means. So you can see that right there. What I was saying. So the plus side is on the master mix, you get zero latency, but it's less CPU with the final mix. But the plus side with the master mix, it comes in VST3 and it comes in 64-bit. So you will have to put the final mix in the wrapper to go to 64-bit. Which I got it. It still worked fine with the with the wrapper too, but you will have to get a wrapper. Uh, the master mix have a high pass and a low pass filter. The 
master mix, the final mix don't. The final mix has the A and B. The master mix don't. Uh, what else? Well, everything else pretty much from that. I mean, other than you can see, it tell you everything about it on the final mix. I mean. Yeah, you know what you was doing and let you know what you're doing other than that. But everything else is pretty much the same. Got the DC filter, which you really don't be really needing too much now. And the only thing is the high pass and low pass filter that's really added. Everything else pretty much still the same. Alright, but you ask me, I like the final mix. Uh, I prefer the final mix more than the master mix, but I use both of them all the time. So, but what I'm going to show you is, if you have both of them, you know they're two different sounds. It's like, I will compare it to the British channel and the white channel. T-Rex plug in the British channel and the white channel. Like, that's what I I consider this like. Like, this, the white channel and the, the British channel. Like, so the difference is, you would notice, this one, the master mix is a little more darker. The, the final mix have a little more sheen and control over the compressor than the master mix do. I put in a dial in exactly the same uh, frequencies, and I'm going to take the high pass and low pass off. I dial in exactly the same frequencies on this, and I got the same things on the compressor, everything, everything the same. Got everything the same, crossovers, everything in the same position. So, I've done everything the same, but that don't mean you're going to get the same sound because it's not the same plug-in. And like they said, they didn't get the specs before the plug-in. Uh, Nike wouldn't give it to them. So, they, just, they, created, they created another plug-in that's similar to it, but it ain't the same plug-in. But it's just as good. Nothing wrong with the plug-in. I, I ain't saying the plug-in is... Uh, I ain't going to even say that the plug-in is even better because you can do some stuff on this plug-in that you can't do with this one. But off the... If you was had to go through the presets and pick which the presets were, the final mix and win all day. So the presets were, the final mix. So now, got both of them selected, and I'm going to show you, we're going A and B. Like I say, both of them are set up exactly alike. They set up exactly alike. So, we're going to play them and see. How, how far away they are in sound. Obey who shit. What's up, track kids? Kid, kid, kid. Oh, I'm sorry. I got the tag track solo. Obey who Obey who Obey who Obey who What's up, track kids? Kid, kid.
Okay, so you can see exactly what I'm saying, right? That the final mix has way more sheen on it than the master mix. The master mix has more darkness, so like I say, it don't make it a better uh, plug-in. It's just for the settings that's put in right here. That's put in on this final mix I put in on here. It don't mean that I can't get this same sound out of this. But with the settings that's already set, that this is, this is proof that this is not the final mix. That's what that means. These calculations don't get the same results. It's not the final mix. So, I'm going to still, like I said, they added a high pass filter because, and a low pass filter, but this have like a natural curve on it. On the, uh, have a up curve on the uh, high end, and it has a like a low shelf, but it's like it's curving up at the end too. I can't, so I mean I can duplicate it, but I'm saying I can't explain it. It's it's going out like a shelf. It's going down, but it's scooping back up at the end, like right in, on the back end. Automatic, it's already doing it. It's built in the plugin, so we can cut the high pass on. I think I already got it. Cut the high pass on. Emulate that a little bit, like that. Then we can cut the low pass on. So as close as I can get it to sound like that was to take this the eighteen fifty eighteen thousand five hundred hertz with uh one one point of Q. So one point oh Q so that was the closest I can get it with the settings that's already set here. Using the settings that's already here. So here we go. Okay, who is
Ooh, price still a little, chopper still a blue. These bitches be hustling. These bitches be fucking. These bitches be sucking. These bitches be ducking. Always on the go. My bitch full of glue. Price still a little, chopper still a blue. These bitches be hustling. These bitches be fucking. These bitches be sucking. These bitches be ducking. take situation it's for whatever you great use it for but at the same time now when it come down to channel strips man these still the best right these still the best channel strips right the Mackie jump still use it all the time you can see it's all over here. I probably got my whole, all my beat tracks got the mono channel strip on it. All my beat tracks. But 
say. Because you ain't going to be 
so fast to think you need to hurry up and finish what you're doing here. You're going to be listening better, not looking at all them tracks. You're only able to see what you're doing. Like right now in my edit, like you've seen, I got 69 tracks, so it will be feeling crazy to be jumping, rolling all the way up and down looking for everything instead of them just going right here and go to wherever I need to go to. straight to it. So man, I hope y'all like the video. Like, subscribe. Go over to Lead Production. Get some lead, get some downloads. Sign up. Holler at you. Peace.